Um, I'm going to uh, walk through a, a brief tour um, through the multi-processing API. And then at the end, we'll do a little demo for you just to see what I was able to achieve um, slight performance increase using multiprocessing. So um, multiprocessing, if you are familiar with the threading module, it's quite similar. It's got a very similar API. Anyone here used threading before? Threading? Has anyone used multiprocessing? OK, so a good number of people. So um, multiprocessing basically is an API that allows you to spawn pr uh, operating system level processes. And the good thing about it is it allows us to skip the GIL, which Michael Ford was talking about this morning, the GIL. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a description of what the GIL is, um, just to try to clarify it a little bit. So it's a global lock held by an interpreter process. So every interpreter instance of Python has a GIL. Uh, and that lock stops two threads of accessing the same Python code at the same time. So only one thread can access, can execute Python code at one time. And only that thread that has got the, that has acquired the GIL can execute uh, the Python code and can access the Python objects or call C functions. So therefore, it's, it's implicitly making the, um, the interpreter thread safe um, against concurrent access. So to, to over, obviously, this slows down your processing. So to overcome this problem, um, the multiprocessing package came along. And that allows us to, instead of creating multiple threads running inside the same interpreter instance and inside the same process, you will be running separate processes, each with its own interpreter instance and GIL. So they don't clash with each other. There's no fighting between the processes on the GIL. So if you have a machine that has got multiple cores on it, it depends on how, how many cores you have and whether it's a good solution for you. But depending on how many cores you have on your machine, it might be a good choice to use multiprocessing for, for some um, data processing. I'm going to um, explain how the basic API works. So we've got the process class. The process class um, is what you use to to, create, to tell Python that you want to, create, to run a certain executable or a certain callable as a separate process. So you create an instance of process, import process from multiprocessing, create an instance of process, and then you pass it the target, which is your um, callable, which in, in this case is our um, if function. And then when you create the instance, the process is ready, but it hasn't started yet. So you started by calling the start method of that. And to wait for it to finish, you need to call the dot join uh, method. And that stops the program waiting for your process to finish. So any, any code further down after the join will not execute until your process has finished executing. How can we exchange objects between processes? Um, there's a couple of ways to do that. There's the queues. You create an instance of queue, and you pass it as an argument. Your, your then function will be able to use that argument and put, and, and put stuff into it, and another process can get, can get the data out of it. The other, the other uh, method is pipes, creating a pipe. And when you, when you create an instance of pipe, you get a pair of connection um, objects, the, the two ends of the pipe. One end can send and one end receive. They are duplex by default, which means both ends can send and receive. But you can disable that depending on what you want to do. A 
A tricky problem with concurrent programming is generally is sharing state. And it's usually not recommended to share state uh, between threads or processes, but if you really have to. Multiprocessing provides a couple of ways to do that. Uh, there, is, there is value and array. So you create an instance of value and you pass it a type code. Type code is similar to the array module. If you are familiar with the array module, there are certain types um, that you can create. So for example, this one is a decimal and uh, the array is an array of integers. And again, you pass these to your target function as arguments, and the target function can access them. And this data that you are sharing, it's, it's in a shared memory space, and processes can access this data. So they can get, another process can see the changes that you made to this particular uh, variable. Another way of, um, sh of sharing data between processes is, the, is a server process, which is created by a manager, you create an instance of manager, and it returns, um, it returns an instance which controls a server process, controls a server process, and has access to its objects, and, and provides a way for other processes to access these objects. It's more flexible than the value and the array because you can support um, any object types, arbitrary object types but uh, it is slower than the other option, which is the shared memory. So this is how you use it. You create an instance of manager, and then on that instance, you create instances of the data type that you want to, to, to share. There is dictionary, there is list, there is other types as well. There are locks and, and various other types that you can check on the documentation. You pass them to the function. So you pass your manager um, variables to your function, and then you can start manipulating them as normal between the different processes that are running. Now, synchronization. So at, in some points, you want to synchronize between your processes. You want to tell a certain function to wait until you finish a certain action and they, so that the other function can execute. And the way to do that is by using locks. So in this example here, we are writing hello world to the standard output. And if you have multiple processes running at the same time doing that, you might get confused um, outputs written. So the text will be mixed up. To, to stop that, you, you create an instance of lock and you pass it to your function that is running as a separate process. And then once the function calls the acquire method of your lock, all other executing functions will stop. They, they cannot proceed until your function releases the lock. So that you can ensure that you, when you are doing the output to the standard output, no other function can do that at the same time until you release the lock. A quick comparison between multi-threading and multi-processing and threading. So multi-processing run, runs separate processes. Threading only runs one process. The multi-processing, each process has its own interpreter instance, but threading run, all the threads run in the same interpreter instance. Um, as, I, as I said before, the process, um, each process has a GIL in multiprocessing, but threading all the threads share the same GIL. Therefore, they, they keep having this contention of, of who, will, who will get the GIL, who will be able to execute next. Um, multiprocessing is more suited for CPU bound uh, processing and threading is for IO bound. Uh, and the GI, because the GIL releases the lock uh, on I.O. <clears throat> so when, when should you use multiprocessing? There are other alternatives to multiprocessing that you may already be aware of, like um, queue servers and, and other things. But multiprocessing, for me, I found it useful because it was simple and easy to, to, to set up and to, to write a quick script that does multiprocessing without having 
the overhead of, of setting up a, manage, a server, a, a queue server. It's also a good choice if you have multiple CPUs. So at Yellow, we have, we have a machine called Betty, and it has 16 cores. So I was trying to process a large file of 2 million records. Um, and when I ran it in a single process, it, it took five hours to, to process that file. And using multiprocessing and spreading the work over these 16 cores, I, I took it down to one and a half hours. So from five hours to one and a half hours, it was a significant improvement. Um, so I, I, that's, that's why I, um, I like to use multiprocessing in, in some situations. Uh, as I said, if you have a um, CPU-bound process, multiprocessing is a good choice. And it also uh, achieves full parallelism. So even though you might think that threading um, gives you some sort of parallelism, it doesn't really because the, th the threads run one at a time. They don't run together at the same time because of the GIS. Uh, these are some references that... Um, that are on the internet and you will probably get in the PDF file. So I'm, I'm going to show you um, a little demo now. This machine here, I've got three virtual machines running. One of them has uh, one CPU and the second has four CPUs and the third has eight CPUs and I will show you what the difference the, the CPUs can make when you have a multiprocessing multiprocess script running. That's a single CPU running, and you can see um, the CPU is is quite busy there. It's doing about a hundred records per second at the moment. So if we stop that and move to the next one. So it might be worth mentioning what the script is doing. Uh, this one is running four CPUs now. The script is basically reading um, a large two million record file, pipe delimited file. It's each process is taking one line of the file, splitting up on the pipes, and inserting and creating um, a database record using Django, one of Django models. And it's doing some processing to format an address. So it, there is some extra logic in each process that is actually formatting an address. So you can see here, This one is doing about 290 per second. So that, that was a reasonably big jump from, from 100 to 290. Now for eight CPUs, We, we did manage to get some extra performance for, for adding some more CPUs. You might notice that the increase is not as you might expect. It's not, it doesn't double, mainly because I'm doing some I.O. in the script. I'm writing to the database, and that's probably what is slowing it down a little. Sorry, um, sorry to interrupt the question. Are you really doing one record at a time to the database, or are you batching in a large uh, chunk At the moment, I'm doing one at a time. Just for just for that for that purpose of the uh, of the demo, yeah. So I, I just want to clarify how the processes are are each independent. Each one is writing one record at a time mm -hmm. to the database, and that could be slow. That could be it's a good question because that could be slowing it a little bit. Yeah. 